A very good morning to you, wherever you are joining us from around Queensland, around Australia and New Zealand, or indeed anywhere else in the world. Welcome to NACO's ongoing free webinar series in which we share the National Asset Centre of Excellence's research learnings with the broader transport community. My name is Guy Hand. I head up the uh, communications department at the Australian Road Research Board, these days known as the National Transport Research Organisation. And NACO, for those who don't know, is a joint initiative between ARB NTRO and the Queensland Department of Transport and Main Roads. And today we shine a spotlight on finding more opportunities for using waste materials in road building as we attempt to, to better balance the demand for natural earthen materials and aggregates in road construction with the huge boom that's going on right around Australia at the moment in terms of big builds, particularly in the road construction space. Opportunities to use waste materials in earthworks and drainage applications can be a huge help in getting this balance right. And today's webinar will focus on this very important topic. We have a couple of specialists in the field to help guide us through their findings. Dr. Javed Yagubi from ARB NTRO is a specialist in the area of sustainability and materials. Welcome to you, Javed. Thank you. And Peter Reynolds is the principal engineer with TMR. Now, Peter will be on hand to answer your questions in the Q&A session that will immediately follow the live portion of this webinar. Peter, it's great to have you with us. Thanks, Guy. Now, Javed, uh, over to you firstly. What are we going to learn today? So uh, today we're going to uh, talk about the use of recycled materials in earthworks and drainage applications. The project uh, has been going on since uh, 2020, so we are in year four now. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to uh, share the learning so far. Super. So we'll just do a little bit of housekeeping to start with. The, web the webinar itself should run for probably around 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, we will hold back questions until Javed has finished the presentation and then Javed and Peter will be able to answer your questions. And we encourage you to ask questions as well. We want this to be as interactive a session as possible and for you to have as many chances to ask questions of the panellists as you can. Uh, there is a chat box uh, there on your screens. And if you type your message into the chat box and hit the send button, that will appear. We'll keep all the questions to the end and we'll ask Javed and Peter at the end of that. We do encourage you to ask questions. Feel free to fire them in at any stage during the webinar, but we will hold them back uh, until the end for question time. Please use the chat box for that. So without any further ado, Javed, uh, over to you to take us through the presentation. Thank you, Guy. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, firstly, uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, the custodians of country. So National Transport Research Organization and uh, TMR acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands and waters where their facilities are located and we pay our respects to elders past and present and extend our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders and First Nations people. So as uh, Guy introduced, uh, my name is uh, Jawad Yagubi. I'm the project leader for this project that has been uh, going on for the last couple of years on the use of recycled materials in earthworks and drainage. Uh, the quality manager for this project from uh, NTRO is Dr. James Grenfell and uh, Peter Reynolds uh, is the project manager from the Transport and Main Roads uh, Queensland. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so today uh, I'll provide a quick background uh, introduction of uh, NTRO and NACO TMR. I'll go through them quickly. Uh, a bit of background to the project, why we need it, what, what we have done uh, so far, the methodology we adopted, uh, the key findings so far, and the summary of the findings uh, towards the end, and what the next steps would be in terms of uh, implementing these findings, and we will end up with uh, questions and answers. Uh, for those of uh, you who know uh, or don't know, National Asset Center of Excellence, or NACO, is a, a collaborative uh, research initiative between Queensland Department of Transport and Main Roads, TMR, and the Australian Road Research Board, AWRB, now uh, known as uh, National Transport Research Organization, NTRO. Uh, NACO operates in seven different areas, uh, including pavements, uh, asset management, structures, network operations, road safety, heavy vehicle management, and sustainability. And this project is part of the sustainability stream. Uh, a bit of background uh, to ARB slash NTRO. So uh, Australian Road Research Board has been around for a bit more than 60 years. 
in December 2022 uh, are transformed into National Transport Research Organization. So now uh, not only covering road sector, but also ports, airports, and rail. Uh, essentially, ARB or now NTRO is owned by uh, state road governments, uh, transport agencies across Australia and New Zealand. And our vision is an integrated mobility future, which is safe, sustainable, and a driver of economic well-being. Uh, Queensland Department of Transport and Main Roads, TMR, has committed to be an environmentally, socially, and economically, uh, economically sustainable organization, being a leader in sustainable practice, uh, limiting pollution, waste, and consumption of resources to sustainable levels, and also building a transport system that is resilient and connects uh, Queensland now and in the future. Uh, to put a little bit of context to, to the background to the project, uh, national waste policy and action plans uh, were published back in 2018 and 19. Uh, the national waste policy provides the national framework for waste and resource recovery in Australia and has been endorsed by all levels of government. Uh, the national waste uh, action plan details the actions to deliver on the seven national targets. So two of the targets are about recovering of waste and maximizing the use of recycled contents by governments and also industry. Uh, so the benefits of using recycled materials are basically conservation of uh, resources, energy saving, reduction in greenhouse gas emission, waste reduction, economic benefits, and also preserving eco uh, ecosystems. Uh, achieving five out of 17 uh, targets adopted by all United Nations member states in 2015. Uh, from a previous NACO research that was uh, P116, uh, Recycled Materials in Roads, Queensland State of Play, that was done in 2019-20, uh, the main barriers to the use of recycled materials were identified, and two of the most important ones were perceived health, safety, and environmental concern and uh, also perceived inferior performance of recycled materials in, in transport infrastructure applications. Uh, so covering these, uh, there is lack of specifications uh, in terms of using these materials. So the objective of this project uh, has been basically uh, to explore ways to utilize waste materials as airwork and drainage materials uh, in, in road applications. Uh, so basically reviewing the uh, current state of play uh, in the use of recycled materials, both nationally and internationally. And uh, the idea was to identify quick wins that we could implement uh, uh, straight away in, in our transport infrastructure, mainly roads, uh, like to uh, increase the use of recycled materials. Uh, so we started by evaluating the engineering and environmental properties of uh, recycled materials to be used in air fork and drainage applications. So the methodology we adopted in year one, we started with reviewing the previous research work, existing national and international practices, uh, and also consulting different stakeholders across uh, Australia and New Zealand. And the idea was the, to uh, like make some immediate changes to current TMR practices, uh, specifically specification MRTS04, which is around uh, earthworks in road applications. So next step for us was doing experimental investigation. Uh, we adopted, fo following the findings from year one, the literature review and consultation, we identified uh, three main recycled materials to start with, uh, including crush, uh, recycled crushed concrete, RCC, reclaimed asphalt pavement, wrap, and coal combustion products, or CCPs. We started with uh, conducting environmental assessment, including, for example, total concentrations of contaminants, and also column leachate test. Uh, Next step was assessing the engineering uh, characteristics of these materials, both in terms of physical and mechanical uh, properties. So firstly, a uh, review of uh, the current practices and also consulting uh, stakeholders. Uh, in terms of specifications, we uh, reviewed uh, quite a number of uh, relevant specifications across Australia and also New Zealand. Uh, which related to earthworks, drainage, or even uh, uh, relating to uh, like pavement applications where 
use of recycled materials were uh, specified and allowed uh, so that we, we, we could understand the state of play in terms of using recycled materials in general transport applications. Uh, as a few examples, for example, in Queensland, uh, MRTS 05, which is about uh, pavement applications, unbound uh, granular pavement applications, uh, there are a number of recycled materials that are allowed even up to 100%. Uh, so if these materials uh, are established and are allowed to be used in like pavement applications, uh, why not using them in earthworks, which is a lower lease uh, application? We also looked at some uh, trials. Uh, for example, this trial uh, was a glass backfill trial in M1 Sports Drive to Gateway in Queensland. Uh, the recycled crushed glass was placed in a trench used for street lighting, power cables, and conduits. Uh, the glass was com compacted in the same manner as bedding sand, and uh, talking to the uh, contractors, they were quite happy with the workability and compactability of the materials, and they were happy with the performance uh, and uh, provided the opportunities. They would uh, they mentioned that they would use this material again in their applications. Uh, again, in New South Wales, uh, quite a few uh, recycled materials are already included in uh, the specifications uh, for a variety of applications, for example, select field bedding material and drainage medium. And again, you can see the, the contents currently uh, have a wide range from 5% uh, up to all the way to 100%, for example, for recycled crushed concrete. In Victoria, uh, Recycled materials, including uh, RCC, recycled crushed brick, wrap, uh, and recycled crushed grass and slag are permitted to be uh, blended to produce the fill materials, including types A to C and permeable fill materials. Uh, the use of RCC and electrical arc furnace slag is permitted in subsurface drainage and granular filter material. Although the use of this material are uh, allowed, there's no specific limits specified for them in, in the specifications. In Western Australia, uh, recycled crushed glass is specifically permitted for use as imported fill for embankment construction up to a maximum of 20% by mass. Uh, in South Australia, recycled crushed brick, uh, wrap, and crushed tiles are classified as supplementary materials and are limited to 20% of the mass in earthworks materials, uh, again, including types A to D, general fill, and oversize. Uh, in Northern Territory, up to 100% RCG by mass could be used as bedding material for drainage uh, works. So basically, uh, across Australia, different uh, state road agencies uh, have already uh, specified the use of this, uh, some recycled materials in a variety of applications as uh, like in earthworks and drainage, uh, as bedding, as granular fuel for improved subgrade, uh, imported fuel for embanking construction and so on. And looking at the uh, allowable limits specified by different uh, state road agency, we can see like, uh, like, like I mentioned, uh, in Victoria, uh, there's not specified limits, but other states, for example, TMR currently also has some uh, like allowable limits uh, specified. Uh, in other jurisdictions, for example, Main Road Western Australia, as mentioned, recycled glass was specified uh, to be used up to 20%, whereas in Northern Territory, it's allowed to be used up to 100%. So there, there is a variety of limits, uh, but the key point is these materials are already finding their ways in our infrastructure, which is which is great. Uh, we also looked at some selected international practices and or specifications to verify our findings and also identify any missed opportunities. So what are our international uh, road agencies or transport agencies are doing, whether we can adopt them uh, and implement them uh, in our transport infrastructure. Uh, so again, uh, we looked at some uh, selected uh, US uh, transport agencies as well as the Department for Transport in UK. Uh, similarly, we found that, uh, for example, recycled crushed glass, recycled crushed brick, uh, recycled crushed concrete are already being used uh, and uh, stated in their specifications. Uh, following the stakeholder consultations, these international and also national uh, literature review, 
we identified three uh, main recycled materials to start the, the experimental investigation, uh, including recycled crushed concrete, RCC, reclaimed asphalt pavement, wrap, and coal combustion products, CCP. Uh, in terms of RCC, we started with environmental assessment, uh, including total concentrations of contaminants, uh, conducting some column leachate tests, and also we engaged a suitably qualified professional uh, to assess the results and like uh, assess any impact of the uh, these materials on the environment. Uh, we also conducted some physical and mechanical uh, testing on RCC. Uh, given RCC is like an established material uh, around the world uh, and also in uh, Australia, we know the performance. So we uh, we, st we did some uh, limited uh, testing on this material to, to make sure the materials meet the requirements, some basic requirements. Uh, in terms of environmental findings, uh, the characteristics of RCC indicated that the material, material is not considered to be regular waste in Queensland. Uh, no apparent issues of concern in terms of uh, like damage to uh, any harm to human health or the environment, uh, both terrestrial or aquatic. Uh, specifically, measured leachate concentrations are below drinking water guidelines. Uh, concentrations detected in RCC are below the criteria pr protective of risks to human health, uh, not of concern to terrestrial environment, and the concentrations uh, were not considered to be of concern in relation to aquatic environment either. Uh, from the leachate test, uh, the pH of RCC, uh, the uh, SQP recommendations were uh, workers handling RCC should wear gloves and eye protection and other personal uh, protective equipment, PPE, as required, very similar to, to natural uh, materials. Uh, no risk for the general public, uh, no risk for RCC were used in bound pavement materials or in compacted materials beneath uh, sealed and unsealed surfaces. Uh, SQP recommended that uh, RCC should not be used as a surface layer for unsealed roads and the pH of the leachate would not uh, result in any increased risk for uh, metals or heavy metals. Uh, the pH of the RCC leachate would, not, uh, would be buffered by salt, surface water, and groundwater, and the potential for adverse effects uh, on aquatic uh, ecosystem is considered to be low. Uh, for materials to be used in drainage, the SQP recommended that the pH should be less than 9. Well, given this is impractical for RCC with uh, like pH is of around 10, 11. Uh, SQP recommended that RCC may be used for drainage provided the materials uh, are not used in areas closer than uh, 30 meters from a receiving waterway. So more testing is required to ascertain the suitability of uh, RCC for drainage applications uh, closer to waterways. And there are some uh, tests in progress and uh, we are going to uh, do some trials further uh, I'll, I'll uh, provide some details. In terms of physical and mechanical performances and characteristics, uh, we, uh, we procured three different uh, uh, samples from three different suppliers. Uh, each supplier provided us with three different gradations. So for example, SAG1 represents RCC sample from supplier A. Uh, with gradation number one, and the three gradations were 20 millimeters nominal, 10 millimeters nominal, and uh, a crusher dust uh, material, which uh, the, the maximum particle size was around 6.7 millimeters. Uh, the objective was to assess the usage for drainage applications initially, although we also assess for potential use in embankment on some uh, subgrade improvements too. Uh, in terms of uh, the findings, uh, so the two, 20 and 10 millimeter nominal uh, materials or aggregates were gap graded or single sized uh, with, uh, with a gravelly uh, soil classification with limited portions of fine. So these were very uh, suitable uh, materials to be used in drainage applications. In terms of the crushed dust, uh, it was more like a sandy material, a uh, well graded sandy material uh, that were uh, we identified that they could be used as uh, 
a class A2 embankment fill. Uh, in terms of atopic limits, uh, all the materials were non-plastic. Uh, so for example, uh, plasticity index of the crusher dust was, uh, uh, it was basically non-plastic. So it couldn't be used as class A uh, field material for embankments. But as I mentioned, uh, it could be used as class A2. We also conducted some uh, wet strength and wet dry strength variation tests uh, to assess the performance of these materials, uh, whether they can be used as type 2.4 materials in, uh, uh, in like uh, subgrade improvement applications, which uh, like for, uh, for the materials that we tested, the 20 millimeter nominal uh, uh, aggregate size, they all met the requirements, which was uh, wet strength above 70 and also wet dry strength variation less than 45. Uh, to summarize, uh, even though uh, RCC procured as, uh, like for use as drainage applications, we also uh, assessed uh, against embankment applications. Uh, crushed dust uh, with a like maximum particle size of 6.7 millimeter or could be used as class A2 air fill materials uh, in core zone. Also, it can be used as fill material used within 1.5 meters below subgrade level, uh, used in, uh, earth, uh, as earth back fill material and also bedding material and drainage uh, as a well graded material. Uh, 20 mil and 10 uh, millimeters uh, aggregate, they can be used in free draining granular material. Next one was wrap, uh, a similar approach to RCC. Uh, we conducted environmental uh, assessments. Uh, the SQP recommended that column leachate was not required for this wrap. So uh, we didn't do the column leachate test on this material, but total concentrations of contaminants were conducted and also SQP assessment. In terms of physical and mechanical, testing, we uh, increased the scope compared to uh, RCC. Uh, also given the uh, like maximum particle size uh, of the wrap, we conducted some uh, large scale testing, including direct shear tests and uh, consolidation tests in, in a larger scale than standard uh, to minimize the effect of boundary conditions. Firstly, with the environmental findings, uh, again, no detectable uh, concentrations of uh, polycyclic uh, aromatic hydrocarbons or PAHAs uh, were reported in the wrap evaluated. Some metals were detected, however, the concentrations reported were low and consistent with the characteristics, uh, characteristics of uh, expected natural materials or green fill, including gravel, uh, sand, commonly used in road applications and embankments. Uh, the presence of total recoverable hydrocarbons or TRH is expected uh, to reflect some non-PAH hydrocarbons, but also natural organic matter and polar metabolics uh, from the weathering of wrap. No issues of concern in relation to risk to human health or the environment, both uh, terrestrial or uh, aquatic was uh, identified. Uh, again, similarly, uh, we procured two types of uh, wrap. Uh, one was provided from a site in Queensland, so an in-situ uh, wrap, and one was procured from a local Queensland supplier. Uh, so it was processed in their facilities. Uh, so these were a uh, uh, source for the uh, lab characterization. Uh, just adding a note here that uh, TMR prefers uh, to wrap to be used in asphalt. However, where wrap isn't suitable for this use in asphalt, for example, it may be mixed with other pavement or embankment materials. Uh, it may be considered for using uh, earth fork. So that's why we, we uh, conducted uh, these experiments on, on the wrap. So wherever wrap is uh, not of that high quality to, to be used back in asphalt, uh, we can find other applications for it basically. Uh, in terms of experimental findings, so uh, both the profile and processed uh, wrap had, had similar uh, properties. Uh, that was a good finding. Uh, very minimal uh, particle sizes, uh, fine particle sizes. Uh, in terms of uh, plasticity, uh, they were they had very low plasticity. So the, these are the results for uh, the profiled uh, wrap, and these are the uh, 
the characteristics of uh, the supply, like the, the wrap procured from the supplier, uh, like so the process wrap. So they were very similar in terms of the, the assess properties. Uh, in terms of large scale testing, so one of the concerns in uh, for wrap material, especially in structural applications, is that uh, the residual binder within this material, uh, th there's a concern that uh, creep behavior would uh, happen, especially in higher temperatures. So what we did, uh, we uh, engaged a, a university to conduct some tests, large scale testing for us, uh, large direct shear testing and uh, large odometer testing, so consolidation testing. Uh, and we kept the temperature, initially we started with 35 degrees, so we, we wanted to see at higher temperatures uh, whether there would be any changes to uh, to the shear strength properties of the material and also uh, whether there would be any uh, creep behavior observed. Uh, conducting the large scale direct shear test, uh, the cohesion and friction values were uh, very, very significant. So uh, this material showed to have very good uh, shear strength parameters, even at 35 degrees. So we, uh, we compacted the materials both at 95% uh, MDD and also at 100% MDD. Uh, the minimal uh, cohesion value of six uh, kilopascal, but uh, looking at the friction angle uh, at around 44, 45, that, that's quite high. This shows that this material even at uh, 35 degrees, it has quite well uh, shear strength properties. In terms of large scale odometer test, uh, we applied pressures uh, up to uh, 400 kilopascals. Uh, between 50, like from increasing the pressure on the sample from 50 to 100 uh, kPa, we can see there is a, a massive increase. Uh, but after that, that stays uh, constant for even five days. So that, that increases uh, basically an immediate settlement. It's not a creep. So that could happen during the construction. It could be due to the uh, like the binder going into a plastic deformation. But we can see that after five days of constant load on it, there, there was not much uh, settlement or deformation. So that, that shows that there was not any creep behavior observed. Uh, I just need to add that these tests were conducted on a mold with 150 uh, millimeter diameter. So currently we are conducting more tests in larger uh, molds uh, to make sure the, the boundary effect is removed. And also we are trying different temperatures to, to see the effect of temperature basically. So it, as I mentioned, initially we started with 35 as uh, potentially a worst case scenario to see what happens and then uh, assessing further as we go. So again, in terms of wrap, uh, we identified some uh, applications. Uh, for example, in embankment, wrap could be used uh, as class A2 air fill material. Uh, it can also be used as a fill material uh, for subgrade improvement, granular fill for subgrade improvement, uh, air backfill material, free draining granular uh, material. So in all three main applications of embankment, subgrade improvement and backfill applications. Uh, last one is cold combustion products or CCPs. Uh, again, we conducted some total concentrations of contaminants tests and assessed by an SQP. Uh, these materials, I will go over the, uh, the samples procured by, basically they were uh, both bottom ash and fly ash, so, and also a blend of bottom ash and fly ash. Uh, we increased the scope of testing for these materials because these are fairly, uh, these are basically not quite established as other uh, tested materials, including uh, RCC and RAP. So we increased the scope to make sure we have a proof of concept before we, we move to the next steps. In terms of uh, uh, samples, uh, we procured samples from uh, six different uh, power stations uh, in, in Queensland, thanks to Ash Development Association of Australia, uh, ADAA, uh, for uh, facilitating the sample collection. Uh, the samples were collected as pond ash, uh, so a blend of bottom ash and fly ash, and in other uh, power station, uh, we collected samples as bottom ash uh, or fly ash from dry and wet storage areas. Uh, in terms of environmental findings, uh, 
Well, again, workers handling CCP should utilize required PPEs similar to other uh, construction materials, uh, but including respiratory protection for dust because uh, CCP could have some dust. Uh, again, with using PPE, this can be mitigated. Uh, CCP material resource from most power stations evaluated comply with the criteria detailed in the end of phase code for bound and unbound applications as proposed. Uh, the only minor finding was the concentration of boron reported in fly ash materials for one power station exceeded the criteria in the end of uh, base code. So that, that is still under investigation, but the majority of uh, other than that one uh, example, the rest uh, complied with the end of phase code. Uh, no risk issues of concern in relation to human health or the environment. Uh, where the material may be removed from project area in future works, uh, the concentrations present in the CCP are below the criteria for regulated waste. Uh, that is, uh, material would not be considered regular uh, regulated waste. Uh, in terms of experimental findings, the characteristics for power station A, uh, we, we have put this uh, separately. So we started with power station A and the material was a pond ash, a blend of bottom ash and uh, uh, fly ash, uh, and then uh, once we were done with this, uh, with, with these samples, we moved on to the next uh, samples that I will show in in the next slides. So we procured nine samples from five different locations uh, uh, of this power station. Uh, percentage passing uh, seventy five micron test sieve uh, was quite high, so this was more like a silty material with low plasticity, the CBR values sitting around uh, having a range of six to 30 and uh, friction angle having a range of uh, 36 to 40 uh, degrees, uh, which is like very similar to natural sand and gravel, uh, both medium to dense uh, natural sand and gravel. Uh, the other finding was that these material were highly dispersive. Uh, in terms of samples from other uh, power stations, as I mentioned, uh, they were like, uh, separate into two categories of bottom ash and fly ash. Uh, both had very similar trends of particle size distributions. Uh, again, similar to results uh, with, with the power station A, uh, samples from uh, other five power stations had similar results. Uh, bottom ash was found to be non-plastic, whereas fly ash was uh, like slightly plastic, uh, so it had a low plasticity. Uh, but again, the main finding here was that these materials are highly dispersive uh, when we conducted pinhole dispersion tests. Uh, in terms of shear strength properties of uh, samples, so we conducted standard uh, uh, testing. Uh, so we, we use fly ash because of the particles that we use fly ash samples to conduct the testing uh, and samples were undisturbed. Uh, so the cohesion values sitting at around one to 30 kilopascal and friction angle sitting at around 30 to 40 uh, degrees. Typical sand backfills, which have a, like uh, similar to the sand backfill, uh, which have a friction angle between 29 and 41 to 44 ish. Uh, so the results were in both UU uh, on drain, on consolidated and uh, consolidated uh, on drain test uh, conditions. Um, in terms of consolidation tests on uh, on these uh, fly ash samples from five uh, power stations. We applied stresses up to 800 kilopascal. Uh, the compression and swelling curves, as well as the wide range of void ratios indicated dispersive uh, diverse behavior uh, between each uh, CCP sample. Uh, looking closer at the parameters, the compression indice, uh, indices of the CCP samples vary from uh, 0.12 to 0.4, 0.012 to 0.4, uh, with the majority being in the range of 0 0.0005 to 0.05 for a sandy soil, uh, typical for a sandy soil. Uh, the swelling indices vary from uh, 0 0.01 to 0 0.034, similarly reported for a sandy soil containing fly ash. Uh, the calculated permeability indicated that these materials have permeability classifications of very low to practically in, uh, impermeable. So this may indicate that these materials should be used in the core zone of embankments. Uh, 
uh, and also the percentage of uh, coefficient of secondary compression uh, was like less than 0.2, uh, which is classified as very low. Uh, so um, th there is no concern of uh, secondary compressibility, basically, with these materials. Um, so again, key findings, uh, summarizing the findings in terms of applications in embankment, subgrade, and backfill applications. Uh, um, these CCP materials technically could be classified as embankment field class A2 uh, in terms of strength and stability. But because of the potential for erodibility, uh, they're best used when enclosed uh, only in core zone of embankments uh, and also when uh, enclosed and capped by class A2 uh, or B earth field materials. So there are some applications that we can use these materials, uh, for example, class A2 earth field material for embankments or field material used within 1.5 millimeter uh, meters below subgrade level. But as I mentioned, these need to be uh, enclosed because of the, that potential for uh, uh, erodibility because of that high dispersivity. Uh, so to summarize, key findings from literature review uh, was that recycled materials are accepted for use in earth fork and drainage applications throughout Australia and internationally in, in limited applications. We're not quite there. Uh, we can see in some applications, uh, some of these uh, recycled materials could be used up to 100%. So the, these are established practices. Uh, why not we can adopt these to, to other recycled materials? Um, so we, we need to uh, invest more in this. In terms of the uh, summary of findings for, for these three materials, uh, as mentioned, uh, both three like RCC wrap and CCP can be used in different applications. Uh, we need to be mindful of the restrictions and we need to be mindful of uh, any further assessment that we need uh, to do uh, before we go and implement these uh, materials in our in transport infrastructure. So far, the results are very promising. Uh, we have uh, identified some uh, field trials to, uh, to move into the next step uh, or next stages of uh, implementing these materials, which is fantastic. Uh, in terms of summary of findings for specific materials. Uh, RCC as an established material in road applications uh, has a sufficient shear strength properties uh, for usage in pavement road embankments, uh, mainly suitable uh, to be used as a free draining backfill material, uh, bedding material, fill and backfill material, depending on the gradation. Uh, so uh, if you remember, we had three different gradations. So depending on the gradation, this material can be used in, in, in some applications. Uh, as for wrap, uh, it may be suitable for use as class A2 air fill material, air, fill, uh, air back fill material, free draining granular material, and in subgrade applications. Uh, the residual binder in wrap samples did not cause any creep behavior. Uh, wrap in embankment is recommended to be limited to heights of three meters at this stage until we conduct further testing that are in progress and also uh, further um, field trials. So at the moment, we, we recommend that it needs to be limited to a height of three meters if, if need, uh, used in embankments. Uh, in terms of coal combustion products, uh, these materials can be used in the core zone of embankments, uh, but as a blend of fly ash and bottom ash. Uh, recycled crushed glass, the, uh, uh, in some field core zone of embankments, for example, uh, drainage and bedding applications up to 100% RCG can be used. Uh, so uh, moving forward, conducting field trials can provide conclusive evidence on the actual performance of the recycled materials in air fill and drainage applications. However, some applications could be implemented into specs uh, without field trials. Uh, the, the other key uh, uh, item here is to be mindful that we are trying to identify the high end users for these applications. And above all, the whole purpose of doing this is sustainability. So for example, if in a regional area, there's not a uh, supply of recycled materials, there's no point moving uh, like these recycled materials hundreds of kilometers away to the site to be implemented. So the whole idea here is this sustainability. And uh, we are trying to uh, have a proof of concept, uh, like uh, proof that 
these materials can be used in our uh, transport infrastructure, specifically in this project in uh, airport and drainage applications. So next steps, uh, we are doing a desktop study and planning for testing on recycled crushed brick as the next material. Uh, we are also carrying out some further lab testing on uh, coal combustion products, including uh, California bearing ratio, electrical conductivity, if they want to, uh, we want to use them in, in conduits, around conduits. Uh, we also want to do some uh, cyclic testing to make sure there is a, a low, basically because these materials were uh, shown as like most of them were like a silty material, we want to make sure uh, that there's no potential for liquefaction. So we want to conduct some cycling testing on them. Uh, further rep testing in progress in terms of large scale testing, as I mentioned, different temperatures and uh, a variety of mold sizes. Uh, we are in progress uh, in terms of conducting a field trial of uh, RCC in one application. A site has been selected. We are finalizing the designs. Uh, same as RAP being used in, in one field trial in Queensland. So again, we are finalizing the, the design for, for that trial. Uh, we are in the planning stage for conducting a field trial of uh, cold combustion products. But as, uh, as I mentioned, we, we, we are carrying out some further testing to make sure uh, it is uh, it is safe to proceed with the field trials. And uh, eventually we wanna update the uh, uh, fork specifications of TMR, which is MRTS04. So uh, introducing these uh, materials into the specification, so removing the barriers uh, for optimizing the use of these materials in our uh, transport infrastructure. Uh, thank you for uh, listening to, to this webinar. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, Myself and Peter would be more than happy to answer. I hand over to Guy. Thank you so much uh, for that presentation, Jav. It's certainly uh, a fair bit, uh, a fair, fair, fair bit of uh, thought or, or sort of food for thought there uh, in the presentation. Just a reminder, also as well as uh, Javed, we have uh, TMR's principal engineer Peter Reynolds on the line as well, who'll be able to answer some questions. So we'll just ask Peter to take his mic off mute and join us very shortly. We do have a couple of questions. Uh, we also will have room for a few more definitely. So if you do want to use the Q&A box, the chat box, um, please send that through. We have a couple of questions for you. Uh, I think one of which you've already answered, Javed. I'll, I'll start with that one first. Uh, if these materials are not available in remote areas, does this then defeat the purpose for them to be used? I think you answered that towards the end of the presentation there. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, but like I mentioned, the whole idea here is sustainability. So wherever these materials are available, we try to maximize, this, uh, maximize the use of them, uh, both in terms of economics and environmental impacts. So, Excellent. Okay. Um, there's uh, a couple more questions here I'll run through. So this one, this one from Kenneth, what is the biggest challenge that you think facing the adoption of these types of materials in road construction? So I'm assuming he means, I, I, I'm assuming he means more than the three that you've spoken about. I'm talking recyclables in general. Uh, yes. Yeah, so basically I would say risk aversion um, because of the perceived uh, inferior performance, also lack of awareness. So, um, Many of the jurisdictions or uh, authorities uh, are not aware of the, the performance of this material, which, which are proved, uh, basically being used uh, both nationally and internationally. So um, two main uh, challenges or uh, barriers could be, uh, if I want to mention them, uh, could be risk aversion by, by asset owners, basically, and also contractors, and uh, lack of awareness. So that's why we try to promotes uh, this type of uh, knowledge dissemination so that uh, everyone is on board. Excellent. Well, I'll, uh, Peter, do you have anything to add uh, with that one at all? No, I think uh, Javed uh, covered that pretty well. I guess it's, um, and I guess we are working towards uh, trying to formalize some of the um, uh, additional um, quality um, requirements for supply and uh, and use uh, in our specifications as well. I think that um, is certainly um, something that's been develop, um, developing over the over the years. And um, because it is something that, um, in regards to the specification of, of these materials, 
we, we you, can't, you can't while we do do some comparisons and Javed sort of mentioned um, a lot of the comparisons or, or potential uses in his, his presentation um, for for example um, a, a, a certain class of fill material we, we are sort of comparing uh, uh, yeah we're trying to compare a, um, a recycled material to a, a natural natural material and sometimes the um, there's the the quality requirements are, are, are quite different particularly I use the example of wrap you know in terms of I think um, what we were concerned with in the binder uh, sorry sorry the wrap at um, shear strength and compressibility at higher um, higher t elevated temperatures and and you know um, and binder the residual binder content may be a factor um, for you know in, in that in the performance of the material so you know just just as a very crude example perhaps you know uh, in in in, our, in specification of wrap materials in the future there may be some sort of um, conditional requirement on the on the the limit limit of uh, a binder content that could be safely used for embankment so uh, hopefully just you know that that is just um probably um the, uh, the other thing i'd see is that uh just just to be able to have that confidence where you can go to a specification and, and actually know that um, it's been uh, the proof of concept's been done and, and it's been tried and tested in a field trial and then then the, and, and you've got some certainty about what you know as as a supplier and a contractor as to what sort of uh, properties you need to comply with to be able to safely use this in road construction. It's a very neat segue, Peter, into into the next question. Here, this is from Niraj. Did it surprise you uh, the wrap findings regard the regarding the strength shown in the shear test, and what is the reason for the extra temperature testing? Um, so I'll, I'll yeah, Peter, if you want to go ahead, go on. I guess um, on the back on the base, well, certainly um, first part of the question in regards to the uh, the, the the shear strength uh, probably. Um, uh, we weren't sure what to expect uh, in terms of the shear strength, um, particularly the, the binder content for so for the sample that we uh, that was um, sourced from a um, supplier, a recycled materials supplier, was up around uh, the three and a half percent, I think, Javed. But um, so um, you know, potentially, um, you know, with the um, we we were we wanted to evaluate properly the um, you know if there was in some sort of um, reduction in the in the interparticle uh, frictional um, friction between um, for this material you know if, if this if this binder would have a, have an impact on it so um, it is quite pleasing that yeah that the the, the large-scale testing sort of um, um, so it showed that it probably wasn't a problem in terms of the actual um, elevated temperatures there's a body of research that um, we, we have come across and where uh, that this type of um, testing had been done um, and, and published, and and so I guess it's some probably I guess in the back of our minds, looking at uh, some of the using these materials in um, some um, where the the you know you've got the climatic conditions, uh, are you getting those high elevated temperatures, and poten looking potentially towards um, impacts of climate change, you know we really wanted to um, do the due diligence there and see if you know. Potentially, if there was some um, some extreme weather events where you get um, those type of um, uh, you know trying to put uh, make sure those sort of risks didn't weren't manifest in, in in using this material in the future, Java, do you have anything else to add in that regard? No, I think you covered it all. Basically, we wanted to because uh, there were some initial uh, concerns, uh, but not much has been done, especially in in the uh, in Australian environment. So as you mentioned, we just wanted to make sure uh, under different conditions, both uh, but removing boundary conditions in terms of like different compaction levels, in terms of temperature with the climate change uh, effects, we wanted to, to make sure these materials are performing well. And as I mentioned, further testing is in, in progress to make sure uh, we are on the right track. Thank you both for that, gentlemen. Uh, just one more question. This is from Kenneth again. Uh, why is there such a discrepancy between different states and what uh, levels of accepted recycled materials that they use in construction? Uh, Peter, do you want to take that or? 
Oh, I was going to hand it, bullets, oh. hand bullets straight back to you, mate. Um, <laughs> I, I guess our literature review, um, Javid, is um, yeah, it is it is quite interesting, and I think it goes back to what you were saying before in regards to the um, what are the barriers in in the using of material of uh, recycled materials, and I think you sort of covered that off pretty well in terms of. Um, yeah, that's sort of lack of awareness or, or you know, that's, the other thing is the supply chains as well, I suppose, uh, and um, opportunities that exist sometimes too. But um, you probably got a, a, some f a few more thoughts on that, Javid. So, yeah, basically that supply chain is, is an issue. Like all, all jurisdictions do not have the, the uh, recycling processing facilities uh, uh, as others. So some, some are more advanced. Uh, the other issue is, again, in terms of that risk aversion, some jurisdictions are willing to take more risk uh, using these opportunities in, in their assets uh, or in their projects. Uh, some are a bit hesitant. So, yeah, as I mentioned, we're, we're trying to, uh, to promote these materials, uh, make proof of concepts to, to remove these barriers. And hopefully we, we will see like uh, it's it, even during these three years that we are doing this uh, study, we, we can see some changes, which is great. And I think both of you gentlemen are too modest to mention this, but the, the excellent research work that is being done by you and, and through NACO here is going to help probably re bring those barriers down when it is widely proven, um, you know, the merits of these particular materials. Thanks, Guy. And uh, right there, that guy. is pretty much it unless there are any other questions which i do not see i think we've got through them all um so in that case um I, i'll just just throw it open basically, basically to java and peter is there anything else um that you, you'd like to add you see the naco um details up on the screen you can also find out about um this uh this particular report you can go to the naco website and look under publications there and you'll be able to find uh, a little bit more information uh about uh, about the project itself uh, so you can you can visit the NACO website to find that out. But gentlemen, I'll just throw it open to you if you have any um, closing comments or anything that you'd like to mention. Uh, so just adding to your comment in terms of the report. So year one report, which is about the uh, literature review and stakeholder consultation we did, it's already available on uh, on the NACO's website. Uh, the experimental parts, uh, because we are in, still in progress with testing, uh, we have uh, in, in the final stages of uh, finalizing one portion of the testing, and soon it will be available on uh, on the NACO website. But further testing and field trials are in progress, so uh, probably next year with both the field trials, uh, potentially we will have another webinar to uh, to disseminate the findings from uh, further testing and trials as well. So yeah, anything you wanted to add, Peter? I guess just to go back to your point during the presentation, uh, Javid, is that um, you know we we uh, are emphasising the recycled materials. We need to focus on the high value applications first, and then particularly with uh, earth earthworks applications, um, you know we, we you know we we only wanted to um, you know, use the lower quality materials. So that's that's the um, that's the opportunity we see to um, to have the you know the, the best um, the best wins in that regard and and um uh we also just um trying to um you know i guess the risks also do you know what, what we focused on with the with research was um using these materials um in their entirety basically a hundred percent um proportions so you know if we're using them as blends uh, like like you've shown with the literature review and for other um Road, uh, road authorities, um, Javid, uh, the the risk obviously reduces there. So, you know, that's um, there's 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 that sort of aspect too that we probably um, need to understand as well. But um, yeah, the for the proof of concept test uh, um, study that we've done to date, it's all about the hundred percent use. So there may be some other recommendations that come from from our final report in regards to um, you know, sort of blend opportunities for blending and that sort of thing where where possible. And that's particularly a, um, a probably a um, a good um, opportunity for you know um for construction projects where there's waste is generated on site and uh, you know the, the the we're trying to avoid um you know the 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 dumping of the waste and 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 having up and but not having enough materials to you know um properly um cater for your full earthworks 
um, sort of construction. So um, those are those opportunities by by using waste on site. Um, well, it's not business. Well, it's not business as usual at the moment, but that probably is um, something to look look towards um, in the future use of these materials as well in 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 in, um, in certain percentages of proportions. Excellent, thank you, Peter. And just uh, just one more question quickly um, that we've uh, we've got snuck in before the death, and this is actually one I can answer for you uh, from Robin. Will the recording be available on the NACO website? Yes, it absolutely will be. Uh, that will be up there tomorrow. It'll also be on the NACO YouTube channel as well, uh, if you want to view uh, view, view it on on that as well. And we expect to have that up probably no later than uh, tomorrow, which is uh, Wednesday, September the twentieth. So we will we'll have it up uh, then. So uh, I'll bring this webinar to a close. So thank you so much, Dr. Javed Yagabi. Thank you so much for, for joining us and putting together an excellent presentation. Thank you. And Peter Reynolds from TMR, Principal Engineer. Great to have you aboard answering some questions. Peter, we appreciate your time. No, thanks, Guy. Pre uh, much appreciated. Excellent. All right. And again, you can find this uh, uh, recording on the NACO website and on our YouTube channel. Look forward to catching up with you again very, very soon for our next webinar. Goodbye.